want to write it down, it's not a bad idea. So it means only for th three fourths mom. If you have a four fourth member, you have to go to the general solution. Use the equilibrium. Is that correct or not? This is only for three fourths member because this is what happened. Now in three fourths member, write it down. This is the solution. The three forces either are parallel to each other. In three fourths member, the three forces are either parallel to each other. I'll give you an example or they intersect at, this, at a certain point. The three forces intersect at certain point. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of the three force members. So you can use that idea to solve a problem. Now how it comes about is the following. Let's show me, let me show you a three force member. Let's say we have here a beam, okay? And here is a roller, and here is a pin, and you have here a force of 500 pound force here, and this is two meter, and this is uh, two feet and three feet, I'm sorry. Okay, you have a member like that. Now, look what you have here. You have a reaction here, yes or no, correct? You have a reaction here, let's put it in color as usual. You have a reaction here, let's call this AB. So this is AB. So you have reaction, but this is the roller. All I have to put here is BY. Notice AX here is, is there, but AX value is zero. In effect, there is no AX. Is that correct? Or not? So only I have what? I have AY. Notice there is no other force AX to balance that, so AX must be equal to zero. zero. Look at this, this three force member. The three for, forces are Parallel, that's what you wrote down. In the three force member, the three forces either are parallel to each other, this is the case. Which you cannot use the geometry system anyway. All I have to do, take the moment about point A or point B to solve, which is very simple. If I do that 500 times two equal to BY times five, anyhow you can solve it, this becomes 300 pound, and that becomes 200 pound, and you cannot use the geometry. Now, alternative, this is case one. We said the three in three force member, the forces are either parallel to each other, this is parallel, or intersect at point. Now, the up, the up, I mean the other option is the following. Let's say this time put a force here in this direction, and let's say the slope is three, four, with the same location. So this is two feet, this is three feet, and this is, again, we have here a pin, A, and we have here a roller, B. Notice this is the same 500 pound, and it is in direction. Correct? Yes? yes. This is still a three-fourths member, correct? Mm -hmm. Why three-fourths? Again, one here, one there, one there. Is that correct at point C? Now, this time, this time, I know this one is vertical. There's only one force, yes or no? Because that force is B1. No, this one, I can put here AX and, and use the general rule of equilibrium or use the graphical solution in back of the book. That's what you saw. Is that correct or not? The graphical solution, since I know that these three forces, A, wherever that is, in, in resultant of A, not AX and A, and this one and this one are going to intersect at the certain point. First, I extend that one up here, and I extend that one up here. So this is point O. Is that correct or not? Notice the slope of that is 3, 4. So if this is 3 feet, this must be equal to how many feet? That must be 4 feet. So this one and that one intersecting. Then, since I know that ahead of time, I cannot draw this arbitrary A. Everybody understand that? I connect A to O and find this angle, for whatever, or distances, everything, and then this A goes in this direction, because the three of them should be intersecting. Uh, do you want to use that? I'll leave it up to you. You want that? Yes? Yeah. Mm. Yes? <laughs> do, uh, go ahead, use it. I have nothing against it. Wouldn't it be good for taking a moment at that point? Yeah. A moment of that one actually is equal to zero. Moment of this one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, why, what, that doesn't give you anything. If you are taking moment, you are using the system I'm suggesting. You, are, take, you don't need that. 
Right? You don't need any of this. Is if you want to use geometry, this is what you do. You find this one three, this one four, this one is four feet, and this is five feet. You can find that angle, you find that, that direction, and so on and so forth. Instead of all of that, none of that is required. Take the moment about point A, because you put, that's what I'm saying. This is the one you already know. AX and AY, take the moment about A, find BY, and that's the end of the story. Yes or no? Correct? <laughs> That's what I said. Which one? Still, you insist you want to use the graphical? Who said yes? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, use it. <laughs> I don't care. Yes? Th that was the confusion. It was not about the two force member, it, it was about the three force member. So, anytime they see a three force member, it has some application in future. Somebody are going to use it. But for this kind of equilibrium, use the equilibrium. Because you have to use it for four force member anyway. Everybody understand that for four force member, if I have, I have another load here, at right middle of that equal to 600, I have no longer a three force member. I have a four force member. I have a four. All of them I have to use the equilibrium equation. So use the equilibrium equation. You will be okay. Is that understood? Yes? All right. Is that answer all your question if you had any? What are you doing back there? Are you okay? No, I'm good. Okay, so let's go to 3D because I haven't done you, although the 3Ds are very simple, but let's do a couple of 3D problems. So we are done with the two force member and three force member. In other words, apply the two force member, which are very, very important, and it's going to be a lot of them in future. The whole next chapter, these are all about two force member in every problem. There is going to be two force members. Remember, two force member must be pin pin connection with no load in between, especially when they become a straight. Let me show you that one too. If the member become a straight line like this, pin pin connection, the force be in the direction of the member, which we call it pure tension or pure compression, compression like a hydraulic jack. Your hydraulic jack, if it bends slightly, you have to throw it out, no matter how much you paid for it, because the hydraulic jack has to work in one direction. That's why you say every hydraulic jack you buy it in or your garage door or your under machine or wherever it is for suspension or whatever you use it. It has to be a pin on top. There are always a pin on top and a pin on the bottom to the point that you have to grease it all the time. I was explaining to, to some of the students, they were laughing all the time. We have to take our car, old old car, we have to take it every six months to GV loop to put the duplication of those pins because we want to make it purely pin-pin connection in order to have forces going only in one direction, in the direction of the two force member, if it is a straight line. Is that the hydraulic jack is a good example of that. It, it is lots of machine parts are like that. Anyhow, so it only works when you push it, it makes it smaller or larger, and then push it some handle up or Low, you have it in low there, gray there. Every, every machine has some sort of hydraulic operation there. Is that correct or as a two-force member? Understood? Okay, now let's go to the, some of the homework. Let's go to the problem in your hand, in your handout, it's old handout, not the one. There is a panel which I'm going to show you on, 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 the, on the, you don't need to do that because I'm going to show it on the board for you guys. But please pay attention, it is very interesting. After that, I will do another problem. I show, want you to show you the idea behind this kind of problem. Let's say we have here a system of coordinate system, and we have here a panel sitting there. This is a very interesting problem. You want to, uh, there is a force of minus for, you don't have to look there. Just please draw this in your note because I don't want you to look and then get the wrong idea here. As if this is one of your homework. There is a, a hinge there and the hinge there. We talk about hinges. So if there is a hinge at point A, there is a hinge at point B. The panel is 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter. Now notice the panel usually has a weight at the middle, but we are not showing that weight of the metal because the, this 
panel has a weight there. Sometimes we add that, sometimes we ignore that. But notice if there is a panel or the door horizontally happen here, and there is nothing underneath it due to this load or this push, this is going to rotate about this axis, yes or no? So that is the z axis. This is y as usual. This is x axis. Obviously, it's not going to stay there. Yes, yeah, so you cannot have a panel like that that have hinges and expect that to stay unless you put something underneath it or pull it up. That's why I show you. If you put a force underneath, you are popping it up. If you pulling it, there is a cable there. In this case, there is a cable going from this point C. So this is point A, this is point C, this is point D. And the cable is going from here to here somewhere. And that distance is given equal to 100 millimeter. And this vertical distance is given equal to 80 millimeter. And that's the cable is holding this panel up. The question is, find the forces in the hinge, hinges, A and B, and find the tension in the cable. cable. Lots of unknown. It looks like it. But then, of course, my panel looks very ugly, <laughs> as usual. So let's, let's make it a little bit more parallel to that. So the hinge is here. OK. Is that a little bit better? Yeah, OK. A little bit, I said. All right. Now, how many unknown do we have? First of all, I have to cut the cable. Yes or no? You have to redraw that, or if you have a razor, use it. But you cannot use the same free body diagram. You have to use your tension. This is tension C. I think it's called a CE. Tension CE, which goes from point C to point E. This is 200, and so on and so forth. So you can put it there. Is that correct or not? Yes? No, I can give you that one. So I, I got give that. That we have repeated many times. Coordinate of A, E, minus, this is point E. Coordinate of E minus coordinate of C. I don't know how many times you have done it. I said you are going to do 100, 200 times. I think we are getting close. Is that correct or not? So T, C, E, you should, everybody should be able to do it. The magnitude of that is unknown. Is that correct or not? Yes? So we call it T because we don't have anything else. Let's call it T for simplicity. And the direction of it, I have because I have coordinate of C and coordinate of E. We have done it many times, but it ends up something like that. Minus point, minus point 842I plus point 337J plus four point 421K. K, and answer would be in Newton, yes. Now let's see whether we did it correctly. Notice in the x direction it is going negative, in the y is going positive, in the z is going positive. So it looks like at to that extent. Is that correct or not? Now we have to go to the hinges. How many unknown did we have in every hinge? Five. Remember that five. The only freedom you have is about the z-axis. However, if I make this five here and five there and one here, that is beyond the six number. I said in many cases, if the hinges are too close to each other, the moment we are going to neglect the moment, so we get three and three. Yes or no? So that's what you should draw there. So for each one, you should draw ax, ay and AC, BX, BY, and BC, correct? How many are known is that? Six. No. Three and three and one is, as far as I know, three and three and one is seven, yes or no? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> of course. You said six because you think you have six equation of equilibrium. You didn't look. You answered me before you looked. So something is still is wrong. Read the question. So what's the question? Please, somebody, read the question in the handout. 
Does it say that the hinge A does not have any axial force? Yes or no? That's what we did. We are assuming, because I said, if it is bearing, bearing, especially if it is ball bearing, the, ro ro the rod is here and it can move in the di this direction. There is nothing to prevent that from moving in this direction. Hinges are the same way. If you don't lock it here, it may be able to move in that direction if there is a rod inside that. Anyhow, for there are, we are. We are saying that if you read the question, it says there is no axial thrust or axial force for, P, for uh, hinge A. So in other words, we are assuming AZ also equal to zero. Notice in the handout I gave you, I said two or three or five are known each. So is that correct or not? So for this one, you have two unknown. For this one, you have three unknown plus the T. That's total of? Six, now it is solvable, yes or no, right? How do you solve it? Now, first of all, what are your unknown? Remember, I do, you don't have to do that from now on, but these are your unknown. AX and AY, BX, BY, and BZ. In other words, you, have, you don't have to do that, but that's what you are saying. B is equal to BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. Three are known here, one are known there, and the A is equal to AX, oh, AX is, yeah, AXI plus yes. AYJ plus 0K Newton, Newton. Notice you have, these are the forces. First one, definitely you have to write. The second two, if you write it or not write it, that's up to you. I'll leave it up to you. I wrote it, this is the first time, to tell you how many I know you have. Is that correct or not? However, you have to apply the equation of equilibrium. What's the equation of equilibrium? What was the first equation? This part of it is sigma fx equals, which is very easy to see. Everybody see what I'm talking about. I'm going to do it, but for from now on, you see, this is AX plus, look, AX plus BX minus, minus point eight four two T equal to zero. So actually, I don't need to put that because these are all magnitude. Is that correct or not? Yes? A sigma FY will be, I'm looking here, AY plus by, I don't have to look here because this is not really necessary. Your free body diagram is much more important than that. by, by, minus 400, and y component of that, which is going up, plus 0.337t equals zero. Notice you cannot solve anything yet. Is that correct or not? Yes? And then sigma fz equal to? Again, you look here to see here. You have here only BZ going positively because you draw everything positive. Remember, we draw everything positively. And then from there, you have plus 0.421T equal to. Still, none of this is solvable until you take moment about the point. Where do you want to take the moment about? Where do you take? Do you take moment about C, A, or B? Which one? B, B of course. Very good. So now let's do that. OK. This is summation of the moment about point B that you most likely see in the book or in the solution manual. Hold up one second. I'm going to explain. <laughs> yes, did I make something is wrong? That, is that not, that's not a force, that's a moment, the 400. Jules? No, that's it means it's going downward. J, in the direction of J. Oh, it's J. It's not J. It is minus 4. OK, you want because everything okay. is magnitude. OK. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. No, I just, I'm just having trouble understanding why uh, the hinge on this side doesn't have a Z. It says in the, in the problem. Oh. It said ignore that. What about the other hinge? No, it is there. One of them has, one of them it doesn't. Oh. Look at that. It says in the text of the solution. Because otherwise, you not, will become indeterminate and you cannot solve it. OK? Professor, um, you chose the B? Yes. The moment? OK. It, you, okay. Did I write A? 
No, or uh, you're no, writing B. all the Bs. B, uh, the, no, because I take the, 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 there is a reason we take the B. We take the B because there is the maximum number of unknown. If I take the moment about B3 of them, we, we disappear. Oh, okay. That's, That's the why reason. You chose the That's right. Okay. You see, I ask you, can you take the moment about A? Usually this is O, but that's not the point we are doing that. Because if you have B, S, B, Y, and B, Z, the moment of three about the point B is zero, so it is simpler to take the moment of other one about point B. That's the reason we are taking moment. You take usually your moment about the point that has maximum number of unknown. Yes or no? Okay, remember the other problem you were telling me the same, so I assume everybody in, in in line with that. Is that correct or not? Now, what is that? Of course, some of you are going to use R cross product, yes or no, which is okay. If that's what you see in the solution manual in money book. I, I have it there for you too. So sigma and B is this, right? You have to use R cross product. You have to use R, B, C, cross product of T, yes or no? Using, in general, that's what we do. Is that correct or not? Yes? Moment of this about point B is RBC cross product of T plus what? <coughs> plus R what? R BD or BA. Yeah, let's go with BA. BA cross product of A force. A force is sitting here. Is that correct or not? Have unknown in it. So be it. Doesn't matter. Still, we have to write it in the form of unknown. Yes or no? And finally, the last one is R. R, B, what? B, D, cross product of F, T. That's why I put it in the vector form there, you know, because that's what it is. Is that correct or not? And then remember, this is the deter three by three determinant. This is the three, three determinant. This is three by three determinant. This has I, J, K. This has I, J, K. This has I, J, K. It takes another half an hour for me to do it. Is that correct or not? Then <laughs> equal to zero. Yes or no? Yeah. Then what do you do afterwards? Because you have done this in the past. What do you do? All the i's are moment about the x-axis. All the j's are moment about the y-axis. And all the k's are moment about the So you add those together, and you put it equal to zero, which is the next page of handouts. So look at it. I didn't even expand it. Look at the next page. I gave you the solution. I purposely gave you the solution the way you see it in the book. And many of you, unfortunately, are going to follow this. If you are doing it and you're getting the answer, it's good. But if you come to the quiz and you want to do that, you will be about half an hour behind. And you are only have 15 minutes. So remember that. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. Did you see what happened there? Yes? Then they took the expansion is not being shown even there. I did not time, have time to show the expansion. They show the determinant. All these three determinants are shown there. Expansion, they left it to you to do, which is another four or five line. Is that correct or not? Then they took sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy, and sigma fz. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So that three equation, and this three equation gives you six equation and six unknown. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, let's now put everything on the table, including you guys. Put all our pen here. Let's solve this problem in 15 seconds. All of them. Okay? All right? Okay. <laughs> Let's take the moment of all of that about the z-axis. Yes or no, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Does this have any moment about z-axis? No. This, 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 that. Does that have any moment about z-axis? Yes. 400 times 200. Now, look at this one. This one has three components. Let's show the three components in the... The x was negative, the y was positive. These are the components. Now the z was positive. Does this one have any moment about z axis? Does this one have any moment about z axis? This one is the y component of the t. Yes or no? Yes. These two must be equal and of course they are same, same distance. I can tell you right now this must be equal to 400. It's less than 10 seconds, isn't it? So that must be equal to 400. Get it? Yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you're laughing, smiling, that's good. So that one, none of these forces, except these two have moment about the z-axis. This is the same distance as this one. This is 200, this is 200. If you want, this is four, 400 times 0.2 positive. 
This is 400 times 0.2 negative. I don't even need that because they are the same distance. If this is minus 400, this must be equal to 400. So Y component of my T is 400. I can solve for T. Which method do you want to go? <laughs> this is for the benefit of those when I gave you a 2D problem last time. A few in this class and the other class, they use cross product. I said, what? Wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? You're using cross product for 2D. We are changing 3D into 2D. Everybody on there. Not a 2D. We are using this force distance method to solve a 3D problem. Everybody understand what happened there. Therefore, I stop doing all of this with another two pages of writing or half a page or one page, whatever you want, the way you write it however. So all I'm saying that TY must be equal to 400. And TY was that T times point, or TY was 0.337, must be equal to 400. T become equal to whatever. T become equal to, where did I have my solution? Oh, I put it here. <laughs> T become 1,000, T become 1,187. Then I can put it in this equation and solve for t, calculate t. By the way, if you do that, you put it in this equation. This becomes 400. Now, because I have this one, I can calculate the t. This one becomes 500. Uh, this is not pound. This is Newton. Yeah. This is Newton. And this one becomes 100 Newton. This was 400 Newton. I need to that. All right. Next, I can take the moment about there. X axis. Notice, when you do that, you're getting the same result. You're getting lots of, lots of zeros, lots of R cross product. Don't get me wrong. That's the same solution. There you are not thinking. You are just using math, purely math, without realizing what happened here. Here you are using your knowledge. Everybody understand the difference between two. This time I'm going to take the moment about the X axis. None of this green one and that one have no moment about the X axis. This is 400. Again, this doesn't have any moment. That this must be equal to. You see how easily we solve that problem? Yes? Okay? Can I take the same moment about y axis? Anyhow, that's the solution. But I'll leave the rest to you. It just takes another few. I was joking when I said 15 seconds, but at least it takes a one minute, maybe. <laughs> yes. Everybody got it? Yes? So if you know how to do this, now go to the other problem in your handout that solution is not there. Let's look at the shaft problem there, which has a bearing in it. Look at the shaft problem there. So all your homework problem that I gave you for homework this weekend, use this method. Is that correct or not? All of them fall apart quickly. Don't use any cross product. If you fail and you want to double check it, Couple of them use the cross product and then use this method. Match if it match, you are fine. Everybody understand that. However, this is the one you need. If you are going to go to ME 218, next quarter, whoever is teaching it, you go there. But you have to be prepared to use force time distance. For 2D, of course, definitely. For the 3D, also use it. Is that correct or not? Okay, is that not, not this one? Look, the other handout that I gave you. There, there is two problems there in the handout, the one that was here. On page, go to the one that, your prop, uh, question number five. Question number five in your handout is a sort of a shaft type of, a sort of a 3D problem, let's put it this way. And it has a few points in it, and then you have to, again, in a clever way, try to resolve the issue. That is the problem that been asked in the past as a quiz. So here we go. So you have here a x axis there. There is a rod on the x axis that all the way down here. And then there is a bearing here. I'm not showing the bearing. This is the bearing the B. The picture is in your head. Then suddenly this rod goes down, vertically goes down. And then again, continue parallel to the x axis. And then we connect it to a rod like this, which is 
can be the C, and then here is the force of one kilonewton applied parallel to the x-axis. This is the rod going from point A to point B, and here, if they don't show it there, it goes down there, and then this is attached to the wall with the form of ball and socket. Remember that we talked about that. Uh, and then somewhere here, I think it is four four at the middle, yes, at the middle here, the rod is shaping like that, and then there is a two kilonewton torque force there like this. And this leg is 0.4 meter. This leg is 0.4 meter. This leg is 0.2 meter. This is 0.2 meter. This height is 0.2 meter. This is again 0.4 meter. And this one, they did not give any, any length there. So we have all the dimension is given, yeah, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And this is the sort of a structure sitting there. And you want to find out all the reactions at support A and B. A is ball and socket. You have not seen it in the past yet. This is the first time I'm using it, yes. B, at, B is a bearing, yes or no, which is like the hinges. Is that correct or not? And C and D are pins. Is that correct or not? Yes? yes. You see the picture? C and D are pin. B is a bearing. A is a ball and socket type. Yes or no? Now, we have to draw the free body diagram of the rod. Correct? Where are we disconnecting? That's very important. We are disconnecting here at point A. And we are removing the bearing B. What should I put at A? That one is obvious. What should I put at ball and sucker? Ball and sucker was the one that I'm reminding you again. The one that was moving all around, but no horizontal or vertical movement in any direction. Is that correct? So I should put the what there? Very good. AX, AY, and AZ. So we have here AX, AY, and AZ unknown. Then we come to the bearing. Bearing actually gives you the question you asked there, because the bearing is a rod, and rod can be moved in one direction. Everybody understand that, because the ball bearing is such a way that not, it can move this way, but it cannot move. It cannot rotate, etc., etc. Yes or no? So how many unknowns should we have? In general, we should have five. But remember, we are not going to neglect all the moment. Yes or no? So it reduces to? Three, is that correct or not? But then it reduces to three, then it becomes equal to here. Again, dx, dy, and dz. But if you look at it again, since this shaft can move back and forth this way, if it's not connected there, if somebody moves that way, they say the bx is equal to zero. It says in the, in the problem. So there is no bx. So, so far I have five unknown. Now, we come to the point C, and C is a pin in a space, yes or no? I can cu cut this out, yes or no? And put here CX, CY, and CZ. How many unknown that become? Too many, yes or no? Is this a two force member? Yes. Pin, pin connection. Where is sitting? It is sitting in the Z direction. So therefore, now this is the first time you are using the use of a two-force member. If you don't detect a two-force member, you have to get into that habit. Always look for a two-force member, because if you don't see it, then you get into trouble because you have too many unknowns. Is that correct? You have definitely to determine that one, and that is also become a force in the direction of the member. So we talk about it. Is that correct or not? Either at C or D doesn't make any difference. Let's call this point. Now, how many unknown do I have? All together, six. six, which again correspond to our sixth equation of equilibrium. Yes or no? Correct. So therefore, 
Let's solve this one. Now, how do we solve this one? Okay. Let's do that and we are finished with this system of the work. Now, again, what should I do to make it? it uh, again, you want to write, si I'm going to bypass because it's very simple. You have to write sigma fx, sigma fy, and everybody can do that. Everybody, on that. if this is correct, you write all the x's together. Look, look at it. You have only uh, ax, ax must be equal to zero. There is no other forces in the x direction. Yes or no? Everybody see that? You have ax here. There is no other x for, oh, no, oh, sorry, I'm wrong. You have one force here. <laughs> yes or no? Wrong. Sigma fx gives you ax plus one kilo Newton equal to zero. So ax must be equal to minus one kilo Newton. I thought, I forgot about that one. Yes or no? Correct. Then ay. But I cannot solve for any ay. Notice there is a by here, and let's write it anyway. So next, this was sigma fx. Next, you write sigma fy. Now, sigma fy equal to zero. You have ay plus by minus two kilonewton equal to zero, and so on and so forth. Then you write az. This one is simple, everybody can do. That's why I do not put too much emphasis on that. AZ plus BZ plus C equal to zero. So this is the three equation of equilibrium as far as the force is concerned. Now you have to write again the three equation of moment, which again, for this last time, you can take this time, of course this time you take moment about point A. A. Is that correct or not? You take the moment about point a. The reason is, you don't, of course you can take the moment about B or C, but that's, that doesn't save you time. You take the moment about A because this three will be eliminated. You are still left with three and a bunch of cross product and bunch of equation like that. Everybody, which I said, don't use it if you can. Is that sometimes if there is everything else fails, that will work. Is that correct or not? Let's go again based on the moment about the x, y, z axis. Yes or no? Now let's take the moment about z axis first. You see that, of course that by experience you can do that couple of times for your homework. You will see which one it gives you the best answer. These three have no moment about the z axis. Does this one have any moment about z axis? Yes. Two times what? Two times? 0.4. Please write it down. Sigma m about the z axis. So please write it down. At point b at point A, sigma M A Z axis. So that's the best way to point A Z axis or anyway, equal to, because you want to tell everybody what you are doing. Two, two kilonewton times four, two times point four, so that the unit would be kilonewton meter, yes, and it's going negative. negative. That I cannot tell. Now, coming here, this one is parallel, yes or no? This one is having a? Moment of plus what? By times what? Point eight. eight. And going that way, this is parallel, and this one is other z. Remember that. When I give this as the quiz, people forget about that one. That one has also moment because the z is here. That's what I did. Z. That is here. Is that correct or not? Many students miss that one. This is easily put miss that. That's why I didn't subtract at many point there. Is that correct or not? This is the z-axis sitting here. Everybody see what I'm talking about. This force is 0.2 below it. Therefore, it's going to create a moment, positive moment of one kilo newton times 0.2. So therefore, plus one kilo newton times 0.2 equal to zero, immediately you calculate the value of by. So rather than going through that operation, similar to that operation, not like that, rather than going through all the R cross power drug, the determinant, expansion of determinant, this one, it really takes, if you look at my solution, some people actually did it in less than 10 minutes, some people have to struggle with it. This was a quiz a long time ago. So by become equal to 0.75. So by become 0.75 kilonewton. The next one I want to do, I don't know which one to, I took the, the sigma fy, my, let's do sigma mx, let's go with the x-axis, yes or no? This one doesn't have any moment about x-axis. This one doesn't have any moment about it. This three have no more. Actually, this is the simplest one. This one is 
parameter. So this one has moment about x-axis, yes or no? This is C times 0.2, and this one also has moment about axis. This is 2 kilonewton times 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is 0 0.2. The C must be equal to 2 kilonewton. Yes? <laughs> I hope. Yes. Sigma m, write it down. Sigma m, now this time we don't care about a or this, about the x-axis is equal to, none of this has it. This one has a moment, look at it. Put your hand here, go this way, again, become two kilonewton time, point, two positive. Okay, and nothing, nothing. This one is going like that, is that correct or not? But this distance also is point two, so it is c minus c times 0.2 equal to 0, 0.2 and try. that's why c become equal to 2 kilonewtons and so on and so forth. Everybody understand that. The next is really moment about the y-axis. The moment about y-axis, again look at it. This one doesn't have any at this point. Y-axis at this point. If you have to decide where. You can change this point to here and there and there if you want to, but for here it's not necessary. For some of your homework, remember, if your hinge is here, the most unknown here, take that point, put your x, y, z axis there. Everybody understand, this still work. Put, call it x prime, y prime, and z prime. x, y, z is not universal. You can change it to anywhere you want to, remember that. The point is take a moment about axis rather than point and use the force distance rather than cross product, if you can. That life becomes much, much simpler. Anyhow. Sigma m, we are looking for sigma m about y-axis. These three have no moment. This is parallel, yes or no? This one is parallel. This one has a moment of bz time point 8. So write it down. Sigma m about y-axis is equal to, what was it? What we said, bz time what? Time? Now, let's go this way, is negative. Time point 8 and it is negative, then we come here. This one also have moment about the z, but this time it's 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Is that correct? Yes, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. 8, 1.4, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that is 2 kilonewton times 1.4 and equal to zero, and the other one is also minus, I guess it's the minus, minus, that's right, that's also minus, minus equal, cannot be, so BZ become negative of, BZ become negative of three and a half kilonewton, and we have problem are done. Is that correct or, yes? So we're not taking more than about point eight. We are, in effect, we are doing, we are taking about X, Y, Z axis at A, yes. But it is independent. You can a, a passes through B. X axis through the B, but Y is not through the B. Z, B and Y and Z are not through the B, but X is <coughs> doesn't matter. Correct? Okay. So now we have 15 minutes to go through next chapter. Is that correct or not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And of course, next class, baby. Okay, finish. This part is finished. Any question? Now. What if you don't get this part, you need practice that. We discuss it that still you don't have to use it. I'm not saying that. But quite frankly, if you do not get this idea established in your head, it will be very, very difficult for you to do some of the problems, not all the problems, in future classes. In future classes, when you're designing a building or designing a beam, column, shaft, everything, and it's rod going this way and that way, and you're designing it, the only method that your instructor is going to teach you or to use it quickly, like what we are doing here, is the moment about x, y, and z. Of course, the forces are a little bit simpler. I'm not saying that, so you quickly can get that. But you have to understand the physical aspect of mx, my, and MZ, and you get that feeling, it click for you, as you see many of you are already doing that. A few of you are a little bit reluctant to commit, is that correct? But that needs a little bit more practice. Just put a few of these examples in for, for front of you, takes about an hour or two or whatever. Do cross product, then forget about cross product, try to do it with this. And if the both answer matches, so you are home free. Is that correct or not? Just to give yourself a chance to catch up with the other student. That's what you are supposed to do. 
Anyhow, so we don't have it much here. Let's say anything here except when you do your homework. I'm sure that you will find a few questions here and there. So you need that. The, the suggestion again, I have, as you said it, you're, you asked that question. You don't have to stick to the same X, Y, Z coordinate. You just move your X, Y, Z coordinate around to whatever suited you to give you the less mathematical formula. Now. What are the trusses now? The next chapter, we are going to skip chapter five, by the way. Chapter five, we are going to talk at the end of the uh, course. But we are going to move to chapter six. In chapter six, for the first time, chapter six, we are going to go inside <coughs> the member rather than outside. So far, we were all talking about forces on the member from outside, especially in the case of trusses. We are going to find out something new, whether the member, okay, let's first of all to categorize this. There are two categories of the structure we are going to talk about. One type of structure are trusses, which are totally different by definition, and they are frames. These are not total frames, these are a special frames that I'm going to explain to you how this frame works, the actual frame is more, more complex to be solved than what we see here in this book. These are very simple frame, there is a special frame I call it. And then there are machines, very simple machines that we are going to do some analysis about this in succession. So that's probably, that's how it looks like. The first row are the trusses, the second row are the frame, and the third row is the machine and when we get there it's really very simple but let's first do the trusses the trusses give a little bit of headache to student because students do not recognize trusses okay all the th two three story building that it is in your area they are all wood frame yes or no and usually and there are the wood frame and there are uh, there are a truss under the roof when you see the roof like that there is a, something we call that the framing is called trusses now, what are the trusses are very important. So let's say I put an example here. You don't have to write it down. But you want to write, this could be a truss like that. It has many members. So write it down. The trusses are a structure with several members, sometimes a lot. So like this, sitting on some kind of support. So still we have a pin support, a roller support, but there are trusses, you are writing down now, trusses are structure with many members, with following conditions, very important, with following conditions. All the member, all the members are pin connected. Although in the real life they are nailed together, but nail is not putting big bolt like that. If you, you have a steel structure, you are building it together, that's not a pin, it's that, kind of, that is a fixed support. But if this is a wood and you put one nail or two nail on it, still we can assume it has a freedom because nail does not prevent that to a certain degree. It's a little prevention, but we are going to neglect that. Although they are nailed together, still we are assuming they are pin connection, like wood structure. Is that correct or not? So did you write it down? So stresses are a structure with many members. All the members are pin connection, including the support. Pin, 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 pin. Okay. And all the loads are applied at the joint, not on the member. So all the loads are applied at the joint, not on the member. So, for example, if this beam, which this is the roof, perhaps, and here is the slope, everybody has, sometimes this goes together like that, if they, are, they have different names. This has flat, sometimes you want a flat roof, sometimes you want no flat roof, that depends on what kind of truss you use. In this case, this much of it is flat, this side is slope, is that correct? Usually we use that for the larger expander. Then, if there is a weight applied here, uniform load or whatever, we are going to put half of it here and half of it there. Everybody understand the load, that's what you wrote down. The load is, this is schematically showing it this way. So the load are not on the member, they are on at the joint, okay? 
Then if I use these two conditions, what's going to happen? All the members are pin-pin connected. There are no load on them. So what does it mean? They are all two-force member, And that's how it becomes so simple. This is the type of probably operation that even Roman could do. Everybody understand that. Because it's so simple. We are assuming all the members are two-force members. So purely on their tension or purely on their compression. The idea is, if I give you all this length, let's say four feet, four feet, four feet, four feet, and here I give you the height and the load, 1,000 pounds here, 2,000 pounds there, 2,000 pounds, 1,000 pounds. How do we calculate what are the force in each and every member? This is the goal. Write it down the goal. You wrote the definition. Now you want the goal. What are we trying to do here? What is the subject here? The subject find forces in every member, which is a two-force member, so it doesn't bend. Everybody understand that. The two-force member now is like that. This is... This is not a two-force member because it is bending. We call this in strength of material bending. Actually, today I was teaching them the building. Last week, it was about the torsion or twist. Is that correct? But the first two weeks of a strength material was all about design of a two-force member. Two-force member, pure tension, especially if it is a straight like that. Look, all the members are straight. It's not a bent member. Is that correct or not? Therefore, they are only purely tension or purely... Isn't that the simplest structure you can find? Yes, sir. That's why at the beginning I tried to call you junior engineer, but it's too early yet. Let's at least do the trusses, then maybe, maybe we get there. Because for the first time, you are solving the forces inside the member. So, okay, if I say this member takes 1,000 pounds in tension, do not write this, because you don't need that. This is just for you to get your mind perfect. And this one is 2,000, and this one 4,000. Obviously, this member is much more dangerous to break than the other one. Is that correct or not? So the idea is to find the forces in each member and later on come up with the sizes. If I'm making it out of wood or out of aluminum or out of steel, what kind of material or what size should I use there to fit my idea there? Is that correct or not? So you can guess the beginning of your engineering work. Is that correct? Which comes from the static. Now, first question is, what are the forces in every member? Therefore, methods. Now, we know the definition. Look how I summarize that. The whole chapter, I summarize that in two paragraphs for you. So one is, what's the definition of trust? One more time. All the members are, you cannot forget that. All the members must be pin connection. And the load must be at the Join. Therefore, member are two force member. Their next goal, goal is to find the forces internally. How much, how, how much force I have in each member. And then method. Method, there is two methods. Joint method or method of joint and section method. Okay. Today, probably, I, I can only define for you the joint method. Next week, I'm going to talk about Section method. In method of joint, write it down. This is two step. Actually, for both of them. But step one for both. Step one applies to both method. Consider free body diagram of entire truss. Consider free body diagram of entire truss, and find the reactions at the support. In parentheses, put if possible, because sometimes we may, sometimes we may not do that. And many times we do. So consider step one. Consider the free body diagram of entire truss and find the reaction at support. If this was the case and all this load were given to you, all the distances are given, I just did it a couple of times ahead of this. You understand what I'm saying that? If this is point A, that's point B. You have here AX, and you have here AY, sorry. And here you have BY, of course, all the distances given, all the load given. This is like what we were doing before in previous chapter. You take the moment about here, you find BY and A, etc., etc. Is that correct? That's the step one, which is, uni it is applicable to any actually trust or any frame or anything from the art. So step one is the same. Is that correct? Now step two, 
Right, it down. Consider, I don't probably, I don't have time to do any example, but I'll give it this to you just in case you want to start working on those problems. Step two, consider the equilibrium of a joint. Consider equilibrium of a joint with only two members on it. Consider equilibrium of a joint with only two members in it and solve for the forces in those two members. I'm fine. Repeat the process and consider the equilibrium of a joint with two members on it, or I better should have said two unknown forces in it, but since we have not done an example, leave it at that, that's okay. With two members on it and find the forces in those two members, yes or no? And then repeat the process for the other joint and repeat the process for other joints. Now, look what happened here. This is what I'm talking about. Let me explain to you, then I'm going to use example. The explanation is the most important. That's all you need to do. Now, let's say that these are all given. Let's say this is equal to 1,000 pounds, this is just 2,000 pounds, and this is 2,000 pounds, and this is 1,000 pounds. Yes or no? Correct? I make it very simple. Now, first of all, AX is equal to zero. Yes or no? I don't have any horizontal force. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes there is horizontal. Now, since this is symmetrical, the step one is very simple. A, A, y must be equal to B1. So this is four, 6,000. So each one of these become 3,000, 3,000. So what I did here, without doing any numerical exam for your problem, is a little bit more complex. You take the moment about A, you take the moment about B, you solve it. Is that correct or not? So step one is no problem for you because it's previous chapter. Yes or no? And it's very simple. Now, step two is the new one. Step two, notice, if I go to this joint, how many members do I have there? Four. four. Each member represents a four. Remember I said each member, there is a force on it. So how many unknown forces do I have there? Four. four. Can I solve that? How, how many equations of equilibrium do I, do I have? Be careful. Three or two. This is equilibrium of a rigid body or is it equilibrium of a particle? Let's understand that. that. Let's go to this joint. These are the things I want you to do before I do any example. Let's say this is joint C, yes or no? At joint C, the member going like that, the member going like that, as I see, member going like that, and I have here 2,000 pounds here. Each member represents a force, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way for time being. I'm going to explain that again. How many forces you said? Four forces. Is this equilibrium of rigid body or is it equilibrium of particle? Particle. particle. So how many, unknown, how many unknown can I have? Not three, only two. That's why I said it should cut only two. So where can I stop? That's very important. Not at this point, this point, this point. Where can I stop? Either here or there. If I start here, how many unknown do I have? I only have two. If I have two to look, how, many, how much information is in what you just wrote down in one paragraph? Then I solve for this one, then I know force in this member and that member. Can I go here? Yes. No. Can I go there? No. Can I go there? Yes. Because this one is known, the other two are unknown. And when I get this one, then I can come here. Everybody, so you have to repeat that. What's the problem? If you make mistake in the first one, you are doing it again and again and again. This becomes bigger and bigger. So we'll talk about it next day. So method of joint is, you have to be very careful, but you have to learn it. Method of section, bypass that. Everybody understand that. You are going to